so we would like to begin this webinar with a prayer. I hope you can all join me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Blessed Mother, you receive the good news of the incarnation of Christ, your Son, with faith and trust. Grant your protection to all pregnant mothers facing difficulties. Guide us as we strive to make our parish communities places of welcome and assistance for mothers in need. Help us to become instruments of God's love and compassion. Mary, Mother of the Church, graciously help us build a culture of life and a civilization of love, together with all people of goodwill, to the praise and glory of God, the creator and lover of life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. <laughs> We're so thrilled that so many of you have signed up to learn more about Walking with Moms in Need. I'm so grateful for your presence here, for your commitment of time, your interest, your desire to serve women in need, because there are so many women in need, especially at this time with all that's happening with the COVID crisis and the, you know, the things that are happening with the isolation and all the other risks out there. So it's especially important now, and we're really grateful that you care. We want to talk a little bit about Walking with Moms Need in this webinar. It'll hopefully be a really good basis, a good, a good grounding in what this is, what is Walking with Moms Need a Year of Service, and give you basically everything that you need to get this started at your parish and to begin to walk with, with women in your communities. So to give you a little bit of information, Walking with Moms in Need is a year of service. Really, though, it's a year of preparation where Catholic parishes like yours walk in the shoes of local pregnant and parenting women in need. The USCCB and the, the Catholic Church, as far as we know, has never done anything quite like this before. It's basically this nationwide yet parish-based kind of initiative. And it's really entirely focused around serving vulnerable pregnant and parenting women. Walking with Moms in Need, as you'll find out, is a deliberate process. And it's also a whole church response that seeks to engage everyone in the parish, everyone sitting in the pews, not just the pro-life committee over here, the social justice committee over there, but really everybody so that all know and are available to women who might be looking for support, friendship, and the things that they need to welcome life and to embrace their maternity. We are really hoping that through this year of service, um, parishes will become a community that surrounds women and walks with them as sisters, right? That, that embraces them in their need, but also as friends. And, you know, that community element is, is kept paramount. We are very hopeful too that this year of service will raise awareness generally of the needs of pregnant and parenting women, especially those who are, you know, have, are facing financial difficulty or other forms of, of vulnerability, and that um, it will raise awareness about the church's desire to help and serve them and all of the wonderful myriad of social uh, ministries and organizations and service agencies that have, whether it, it is medical, you know, care available or, you know, food assistance, housing assistance, all the things that really are there to serve uh, women who might be in need. We want this year of service to position parishes as the local sources for help to vulnerable moms and as a community, again, that will really walk with them as sisters. But to clarify, this is really not about turning parishes into pregnancy centers. <laughs> we, we admire the wonderful work that pregnancy centers do. And so we really hope to enhance and referrals to the pregnancy care centers where they exist, because not every parish has a pregnancy care center nearby, but where they exist, you know, and to uh, build those relationships with helping agencies and see where the gaps are. And again, how they can surround uh, women with love and community. Uh, and just, just to tie this up so you're not still staring at the slide, um, just want to say to everyone listening here that the church really needs your particular gifts, your talents, your experience, and that you are, you know, you're here for a reason and that you have so much to give to an, an initiative like this to help get it started and to help move it forward. And we'll give you, we'll give you all the tools that you need to get started and, you know, 
never fear. God will, God will equip the called. So just in a little, a little agenda for our time together, we're going to give you some more of a vision and background for walking with moms in need. We'll explain how to walk with moms in need in your parish. We'll give you some updates and on the end, information on the impact of COVID-19 and how that might influence how you do walking with moms in need, when you do walking with moms in need, and also hopefully answer your questions. So again, giving you a little bit more of the vision of why we're doing this, right? Why is the pro life secretary at the Bishop's Conference pushing this walking with moms in need year of service thing. Our vision and goals, we want to improve and better communicate help to pregnant women in need, right? We want to inspire and engage parishes in a whole church and life affirming initiative that really brings everyone in and everyone together, whether you're for life, social justice, not really engaged. We want to have everyone kind of come together around a common goal. And we want to inspire parishioners to get involved in a new vision of what it means to live the gospel of life. Uh, so the need, right? We know that, especially now more than ever, there are a lot of vulnerable women out there who are in difficult pregnancies, challenging pregnancies, unexpected pregnancies. Maybe they're parenting young children already, and they're going through a tough time, right, especially now. Walking with Moms Need started before COVID happened, so this is not, this isn't new, but certainly the timing is quite fortuitous, right, because these needs are only increasing. Whether it is a woman who you know, has lost her job and now has an unexpected pregnancy and doesn't know what to do, whether it's somebody who has maybe uncertain immigration status and is, is worried about that and then faces a, a pregnancy that she doesn't expect, it could be a couple who is experiencing a challenging prenatal diagnosis and they don't really know what to do, especially in these uncertain times. So we know that these moms are in our parishes and they're in our neighborhoods. And we know that as Pope Francis says, our parishes need to be islands of mercy in the midst of a sea of indifference. So what we'd like to have happen is for any woman who is facing a challenging or unexpected pregnancy or who is parenting young children in difficult circumstances to know that the church is a place where she can find help. Uh, but do Catholics have an accurate picture of what is available and, and how we effectively communicate what is available? Do we know what the gaps are in the available resources? Um, there are a lot of questions here. There are over 17,000 parishes in the U.S. Wouldn't it be awesome if we knew that everyone in a parish community would be able to refer, help, walk with a woman in need, a pregnant woman in need? So... I want to share this quote with you from Pope St. John Paul II's Evangelium Vitae, which really <laughs> reiterates this call for parishes and dioceses to examine whether life is really welcomed in the Catholic community. He writes, with great openness and courage, we need to question how widespread is the culture of life today among individual Catholics, families, groups, and communities in our dioceses. With equal clarity and determination, we must identify the steps we are called to take in order to serve life in all its truth. And so that brings us to our ask for you tonight. Uh, that, those words were written 25 years ago, pretty much to the day, right? That uh, Pope John Paul II's Evangelium Vitae, The Gospel of Life, was published in March 25 years ago, so exactly 25 years ago. And this year of the gospel of life, we feel gives us an opportunity to really ex assess, expand, and communicate resources to pregnant moms and families in need and to answer that call of really how welcoming we really are. The USCCB accordingly has developed uh, resources and is inviting dioceses, parishes, and organizations to join in a nationwide year of service entitled Walking with Moms in Need. Good news. Uh, over a third of dioceses have already signed up for this and are already committed, which is great. And many Catholic organizations have committed to supporting this because, again, it is unprecedented. We haven't really tried to bring everyone together, parishes, dioceses, Catholic organizations, Catholic hospitals together, quite like with this Walking with Moms in Need Year of Service. 
So now that we've kind of explained a little bit about what this is, we're going to hopefully explain step by step how you can bring this to your parish, because we really are hopeful that you will. Um, and I, I know that what's going to come in the next 15, 20 minutes or so might sound like a lot, but it's important to remember that this is intended to be over time, right? So walking with moms in need fundamentally is a process, not just completing a checklist. It's not just, you know, um, getting to the goal. It's a process of engaging an entire parish in, in this, getting your pastor involved, getting people involved who might have never done these kinds of things before, starting something new, and that takes time. So uh, again, this process, we don't want to intimidate you. We're going to give you what you need, but it's just to give you an overview of what an entire year of living this out would look like. So this process of walking with moms in need will include things like enlisting new leadership at the parish to do something like this. That might mean that you decide to take up the mantle and talk to your pastor and get this ball rolling. Uh, it will mean identifying resources and building relationships with local helping agencies in your community. Maybe there's a Catholic Charities, again, a great Catholic hospital, or some other sort of local food bank, all those kinds of resources. It might be discerning more effective ways of letting people know about the great pregnancy resource center in their backyard or other things that are locally available. And certainly it will involve getting the parish involved and getting people motivated to, to take a look at this need and what they can do about it. Ultimately, it will hopefully involve committing to new parish efforts to walk with moms in need. And that will be a really exciting thing to see. But there's a reason, I mean, it's a year of service, but again, it's a year of preparation. So there's plenty of time to go through all these steps and I will, switch over to Chelsea, who is going to walk you through more of our website and actually how to go through this process, give you some more background on the timing and help you begin to, to start to see how you would start taking these steps. Thanks, Kat. Thank um, so we're gonna dive right in and take a closer look at some of the resources, the website, and uh, what's available to you to help you join us in this year of service. So if you haven't had a chance to check this out yet, this is the Walking with Moms in Need website. Uh, this is our homepage. So definitely, if you haven't had a chance, feel free to you know, poke around and see what all this has to offer. We're gonna just focus on a couple um, sections of the website that are gonna be most essential for you getting started at the parish level. Um, so appropriately, you'll just go to the Get Started tab and you'll see underneath there are the parish resources. So that's where we're gonna to start today. Now, um, as Kat said there, uh, the great thing is we've created lots of resources for you so that to hopefully make this as easy as possible to implement. That being said, we don't want you to be overwhelmed by the number of resources. So that's why one of the reasons we're doing this webinar is to just really walk you through them um, so that you know what's there and it doesn't need to have to be um, an overwhelming thing or feel like you're trying to figure it out alone. So first off, um, there are just really three main resources. Um, the centerpiece of the, of the initiative and for you doing work at the parish level is going to be this parish action guide. It really is your one-stop shop. It has really everything you need it has timelines, announcements, prayers, activities, homily notes. Um, it links to other supplemental resources. Um, that being said, because it has everything and we tried to put it all in one document so you've got it all in one place, it's long. Um, <laughs> so if you are overwhelmed by the 78 pages, take a breath, it's okay. Uh, we also created this um, parish action guide summary. Um, I'll just go ahead and open that up real briefly, but it's just going to give you a one page overview of each phase of the uh, year of service, which is broken into five. We'll get into that a little um, in just a moment, but it just gives you one page summary. You know, it's a six page document instead of 78. So that's the place to start. Um, going to navigate back. And then the other uh, essential resource is going to be the parish inventory tool. You'll really utilize this um, in phase two and phase three, but if you wanna get a, you know, a peek at what's coming, that's there for you. But with those three resources, you can do pretty much everything you're gonna to need to do. 
Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into the action guide a little bit and we can explore that together. So right at the beginning, you can see, um, as we said, the Walking with Moms in Need, it's, it's a process um, and it's broken into phases so that you can accomplish the different tasks uh, systematically together, you can plan for it. And um, when it comes to timelines, if you need more time, that's okay. Uh, so don't, don't feel overwhelmed by that factor either. So first of all, at the parish level, you're going to start with phase one, which really is announcing your parish's participation and starting to build that core team. Um, once you've got your core team assembled and you started to build um, your parish support and excitement for the initiative. Then in phase two is when you'll launch that inventory process. That's when you're gonna actually do a lot of the, um, the effort and the work to find the resources in your local area, to work with your diocesan director, to work with your pastor and your core team, to see what's out there and to begin identifying some of those gaps that some of the needs that aren't being met. In phase three, um, you're going to take the results from your completed inventory, start assessing them and thinking about what you can do to fill those gaps and start making some plans. Um, and you'll share those results with the wider parish community because the inventory is gonna be done by the core team. In phase four, then you're going to um, really decide on what, how your parish wants to respond. You've done the inventory, you've gotten the, the lay of the land, you've identified the gaps, and then you're gonna decide what does our parish wanna do about it? How, what, what gap can we fill? Or if we can't you know, completely eliminate a gap, how can we make it smaller? How can we build bridges mm -hmm. and help accompany moms through that? Um, so you'll also announce that with, and share it with your parish community. And phase five, which is super exciting, you finally get to just celebrate all the great work you've done and start implementing those incredible plans um, and just seeing how the Holy Spirit's going to move and unfold before you. So that's just a, a really quick overview of, of the phases. Now, um, we want to walk through the introduction in the action guide provides a little more background. Kat did a great job of giving you um, some of that information. This just uh, spells it out a little bit more. Um, we look at some of the challenges that mothers face and the demographics. Um, really going a little bit more into the vision. And uh, this is the original timeline. Um, obviously this was pre-COVID. So uh, we'll come back to, to that in a little bit, but an overall uh, timeline there. And once again, that was, it's meant for adaptation. So that's okay. So um, we're coming to phase one. So each phase of the action guide follows a very similar uh, layout and pattern. Each phase is going to start with those very simple steps that are going to guide you through. It's basically the same thing that is in the action guide summary. This just gives you a bird's eye view of the, you know, small steps in tasks you're going to accomplish. In phase one, there are six of them. Um, so that's just the easy way to just take it in bite-sized pieces. So each um, section of the action guide, each phase will have just the simple steps. We'll also provide sample announcements to, that you can use to share with the parish community. Um, we've done longer form, some more condensed versions. If you're limited on bulletin space or newsletter space, um, you can still get the word out. You can use these as pulpit announcements too. Um, you know, if you have things like Flocknote or any other parish communication tools, Facebook pages, um, we give you the text and then you can customize it and adapt it, but you know, a lot of the work is hopefully done for you. I said each phase also will have a number of sample intercessions that will kind of guide your parish prayerfully through the year of service. If they focus on different challenges um, facing your women and mothers in need and also um, will specifically pray for your parish community and your involvement in the guidance of the Holy Spirit and success of walking with moms in your local parish community. Um, we also have included homily helps for each phase that will help your pastor, priests, deacons to share about walking with moms in need 
um, within the within the community of Mass. And we know um, even with COVID, uh, so many priests are live streaming. So it's it's just a beautiful way to still build that connection and build that momentum. Even if you're not physically able to gather or not the whole community is physically able to gather together at, the, at this time, um, these can still be useful. Um, depending on the phase, there may be, you know, we have some sample activities. This one, um, that beautiful prayer that we opened with, um, prayer cards are available and we really would encourage your parish um, to purchase those and make them available. Um, Normally, we'd say to keep them in the pews. We know with COVID, you know, there are restrictions there, but all the more people can take them home with them, that's, that's also beautiful, too. And, you know, hopefully um, things will go the way that, you know, we can, we can use those things in mass again safely. Um, and then after those kind of basic things, each phase will then go into kind of the specifics of the task you'll be completing. For example, this is actually a resource um, for pastors, it's to select the parish leader. So that's really the starting point. So this particular resource was written for pastors. Um, so that's a great thing to share with your priests if you're talking to them and they don't know where to start. But then it'll help you walk through things like building a parish core team. How do you do that? How do you discern? How do you, you know, personally invite and engage people that maybe haven't been engaged before? Because as Kat said, we want this to expand beyond um, maybe just the usual um, pro-life community and uh, respect life committee. You know, we really want to bring in as many people as possible to help women in need. So this is truly a whole parish and a whole church response. Um, so there's all these different resources and each, each phase will have those ones that are specific to it. Um, so there we go, this is that. Um, I'm gonna take you back now, once again, to that um, parish resources page. So those are kind of the, the macro level. Those are um, the main three resources. So if you're overwhelmed by you know, the number of links and buttons <laughs> on the website, um, those are kind of the lay of the land. And just to emphasize, once again, really everything is in that action guide. However, if you go once again to that Get Started tab, underneath you'll see for um, a link for tools and templates. So I'm just gonna guide you over to there really quickly. And so um, this provides you know, some of that micro level uh, resources we've tried to provide so that you can really hit the ground running and that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if you're new to doing any kind of leadership role or ministry, uh, these really, you know, give you all the tools you need. Um, if you've never led a meeting before or structured an agenda, you know, we're providing sample ones. Um, if you're not sure quite how to invite someone, um, you know, we have an email invite template. We have, if you decide you want to do a sign up Sunday, you know, when we can safely do those things again, <laughs> um, you know, there are sign up sheets that you can just print and go. Um, so we've tried to think of everything that you'll need. Um, we'll continue to add to this page throughout the year, um, especially if we get requests for you know, more specific resources. And like I said, the great thing is all of these resources, all of these templates are also linked to in the action guide in the specific section where you're going to utilize them. Um, and sometimes you might go back and use something again, and that's okay too. But um, like I said, that's why that action guide, it's long, but it's because it's chock full of just everything that we tried to think of. Um, so we'll continue to, be, to add communications tools. Um, Kat's, I think, planning some webinars on how to get the word out in the media and to deal to uh, work with local media. So there'll be great things like that that will continue to be put out. Um, I said those, most of those steps come in later phases anyway, so there's, there's plenty of time there. And we're also producing educational materials um, some of those are up and we'll continue to add to them throughout the year to really dive into to what it means to serve um, mothers in need and what, you know, what we're called to do as Catholics. So um, that's, I think that's a pretty good overview of the website in those phases. Um, all right. Thank you, Chelsea. 
So I, thank you again for walking through the resources. This is awesome. But do you have any, I guess, information? Again, this is a lot to look at, and, and you've explained the most important things. But can you just, again, reiterate how those who are joining us, maybe they joined a little late, how they can get started? What are the most important things so that they can just get going with this? Kat, that's a great question, because um, even with all these resources and the steps, it can still be like, but wait, where do I start? Um, so if you're feeling that way, you're not alone. We've gotten those questions already. Um, so the, the first thing you can do, and you're kind of already doing it, is familiarize yourself with the Walking with Moms in Need process and the tools that are available. You know, flip through the action guide. It's long, so you don't need to, you know, read it cover to cover. But maybe read through that introduction, look through the first phase, um, look through you know, the action guide summary, just see what's out there, explore the website, um, make sure that you understand um, what Walking with Moms in Need is and, and how you can serve and bring it to your parish. Um, after you're kind of familiar, then the next thing is, to, is really twofold. You'll want to talk to your pastor and also contact your diocese. Um, first of all, talk to your pastor about getting started, especially if you haven't started this at your parish yet. We know some of you um, may have already been appointed as the parish leader by your pastor, and in so many ways, you're ahead of the game. That's great, and we're so thankful for you and for saying yes. Um, for those of you that maybe you're the one that you know has to initiate this at your parish, talk to your pastor. See if he's heard anything about it, especially with COVID. Um, it's, it's been especially challenging on pastors. We know that so many people are, are overwhelmed and trying to keep their parishes afloat. So just bring it to his attention and let him know, um, first and foremost, that you know, you're willing to help and you're willing to guide him through the process and um, just willing to, to make it work um, and that it doesn't have to be a huge drag on his time. So talk with him and, you know, just really build that relationship and, and see if he thinks it's something that your parish could participate in. Um, the other thing is to contact your diocese and your diocesan director. Um, many dioceses have a pro-life point person. Uh, sometimes it's a specific role, but other times uh, they're wearing three different hats. Um, we do have a listing of diocesan contacts on our website. Um, and that is a listing of how to get in contact with a, a respect life contact in your diocese. Um, now, just keep in mind the USTCB is transitioning their um, website this week to a new platform. So there may be some technical glitches for the next week or so. Um, we're going to be checking that and trying to fix any of those, but some will be beyond our control. Um, so we just appreciate your patience. If the site's not working and you really want to just get started, you can always go on your diocesan website, do a quick Google search, and um, if all else fails, just give your diocese a call and ask, you know, who they could direct you to in regard to respect life issues. Um, so, but the reason you really want to talk to your diocese is, as Kat said, a third of dioceses have already committed, which means you have the support of your bishop, you have um, a diocesan contact person that has been appointed that can help you, that can uh, field your questions. So you really want to start there and see what your diocese is doing. Your diocese may be completely on board. Um, your diocese might not yet be, um, and that's, that's okay too. Um, some are definitely going to join later, um, but especially with all the challenges that the pandemic has brought. Yeah. Uh, we, we expect this only to grow, and we're just so excited already, even amidst all these challenging circumstances. Right. Um, a third of them have already said yes. So. And for the ones who haven't said yes, the fact that you are reaching out and asking about it means that they might, and then you'll have, and there'll be even more support because you'll be working with them on kind of how to get it started in the diocese. So we really encourage you to just reach out to them because it would be, be can't can't hurt either way. <laughs> right, it's wonderful. If they, you know, if they hear from people from parishes, it might be that you know bishops have a lot going on, and it might have slipped their mind. And you know, you have a coordinator, someone else that can advocate at the diocesan level. So um, just build that relationship. That's so important. And um, also, your diocese, especially if your diocese has joined, um, and even maybe if you're they haven't, they're still going to be a great resource for you. Often, um, they're going to already know 
um, what resource, some of the resources are out there. They can help you get started. Um, they can help you in inviting pastors and parishes to get on board um, and encouraging them to, you know, seek out new leaders. They can highlight some of those helpful programs and resources. And um, also really important, they can help you navigate and flag any problematic agencies, organizations, resources that may not be appropriate to work with. Um, there's more on that in the action guide guiding you through that process of, of discernment. And, um, but they're a really great resource for vetting sources for double checking and flagging anything that um, may not ultimately be what a mother in need will find helpful. So um, they're great resources. So, to get started today, I said, if you're already doing it, you're on the webinar, um, dive into those resources a little more, you know, do some bedtime reading, um, some quarantine reading if you're still in quarantine, and um, then, you know, reach out to, to your pastor, to your diocesan contact person, and even if COVID, I mean, send an email, do a phone call, um, whatever you can do. It doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, even if, you know, that's what we'd prefer. Um, right. Chelsea, speaking of COVID, I know that's the question on everyone's minds, right? Especially because the action guide and walking with moms in need was created right before the pandemic happened, right? It was initially supposed to launch in March and now, you know, but, but then a pandemic hit. And so mm -hmm. the timeline needs to be resolved, you know? So how does that work? Can you talk us a little bit through that and, and how COVID has impacted the timeline and how parishes can shift things around a bit? Right, Kat, that's a great question, too, um, because it was, it was supposed to, you know, our real launch date was the 25th anniversary of the Gospel of Life, and, you know, a lot of places went into lockdown about a week before that, um, so we lost some of that, that initial uh, momentum, but that's okay. So we're going to look, um, I'm going to pull up this, uh, this is the overview of the schedule, this is also in the action guide. Um, so you can see originally, you know, we were kicking off in March. And it was going to run through next March. Now, despite COVID, the really good news is this camp, this initiative was always designed to be adaptable. We knew from the beginning that we were going to need flexible schedules because it's nationwide. Every diocese is going to have different scheduling conflicts and challenges, and even parishes within a diocese um, are going to have different things going on in their parish that are going to make them need to adjust the schedule. So um, as you read through that action guide, it'll probably sound like a broken record how many times we say adapt, adapt, be flexible. This is not prescriptive. This is truly meant for you to take it and make it your own. We just wanted to do as much of the work for you as possible. So um, with that, with COVID, we have, um, heard that a lot of dioceses have been delayed. Some were able to kind of launch and get it off the ground, but then, you know, had to shut down. So many dioceses are opting to, to just delay that launch or relaunch. Um, some dioceses we've heard from are going to try to just catch up to the schedule. A lot of, you know, the beginning steps and tasks can be done virtually. Um, so that's also the good news. You can get started now. And um, other dioceses, you know, they're just, they're gonna, they're gonna delay just a little or they're gonna, you know, they started and they're, maybe they're gonna extend or just adjust a little bit. So all those things are great. So um, whatever is gonna work for your parish, for your diocese, um, we want everyone to be safe and prudent. Um, but that's why it's great is all these things were meant to be adapted from the beginning. So, you know, it's not all is lost by any means, you know, we're really trying to celebrate um, for a year long anyway. So even if you have to delay, um, you know, we've given some alternative schedules for starting. Some, um, some of those dates are October for Respect Life Month. Um, there's also an option for January. And, you know, some may even choose just to wait till next March and just follow the same timeline, just a year delayed. And that's okay too. That's wonderful. And that gives you lots of planning time. And there are things you can do to get started though, even now. So no matter which option your diocese kind of takes or your parish, um, it really is designed to be flexible. Thank you so much, Chelsea. So just to review and sum up, 
Walking with Moms in Need is a parish-based yet nationwide <laughs> initiative, which means, again, we need lots of flexibility because every area is different, has different needs and different schedules. And it is a deliberate process. It is a deliberate process where if, no matter when you start, you go through a similar process, similar phases, all of which are laid out in the action guide. We are attempting as, as, a, as a Catholic you know, community to facilitate parishes to walk with and accompany vulnerable pregnant and parenting moms. To do that, we're going to identify new parish leaders, try to bring in more blood, get the clergy and the laity to work together to make a positive impact. Not necessarily about replacing what's already there, you know, or trying to take the place of a pregnancy center, but to find what is there locally and then where the gaps are and then where they can fill those gaps so we can take care of our sisters, you know, the women who are out there who, who need to see the face of Christ. Uh, we want to, as part of this, change the conversation about what it means to live the gospel of life and to to be a, a Catholic, you know, walking the walk instead of just talking the talk, you know. And again, we are about building, fundamentally about building relationships as we engage through this process so that the community can surround a woman in friendship and walk with her through her pregnancy and beyond, right? So that's what walking with moms in need is really all about. We are hoping you can get started right now <laughs> because the pandemic and its economic impact has only made the situation more precarious for women who are facing an unexpected or challenging pregnancy or who are parenting young kids and might be in need. Uh, while Walking with Moms in Need was started way before the pandemic ever hit, we couldn't have predicted that. Its goal is to lay a foundation for a long-term sustainable response. This year of service is the beginning. It is, that it, it is laid out, but what you do with that, what your parish does with that will be its own future. And we really hope that will be a sustainable thing so that women in your community will continue to be served by the love of the local church. And the church, again, needs to be prepared to respond to increased calls for help and assistance with COVID. We know that everyone here watching today has unique gifts that they can bring to this, that they can do for to live the gospel of life in their community and to serve the, the most vulnerable among us, really. So um, with that, um, we will go to towards q a a lot of you already have listed some great questions thank you so much for your enthusiasm for this we'll try to get to as many of them as we can and with that i'll give you Anne. thanks kat um two people asked a similar question is there a way that um that you us usccb could connect um different organizations in the local area hospitals churches catholic organizations um, who have shown an interest in walking with moms um, and would all the parishes be able to receive this information um, about these organizations? Um, so I will just sort of tee that up by saying um, that is the um, meat and potatoes of this process that we are inviting you into. And um, does anybody want to add to that? This is Tom. I would just add that every uh, diocese was asked to fill out their own survey and their own uh, listing of resources available at the regional level and the diocesan level to share with parishes. So that's one of, why one of the important points is to get in touch with your diocesan uh, contact person as soon as you can. And Tom, how would they find out who their diocesan contact person is? Uh, I think we're going to be sharing the link to um, the listing of diocesan contact people in the chat and probably in the follow-up on uh, an email to all the attendees. Okay, you mean, uh, okay, so not the person who's been appointed for Walking with Moms, but the, like our, the directors who were actually working the chanceries. Yes, and most often they're the same. So right. once you go to that directory and start with that person, then most likely they'll be the person you want to talk to anyway, yep. or they can help you figure out who it is. Yep. Um, okay, somebody was asking, um, where to go? Okay, is there a USCCB Spanish speaking coordinator for walking with moms? So while we do not have a staff level uh, Spanish speaker for walking with moms, um, the reality of this is that actually we don't even have an English speaking coordinator for walking with moms. Um, this is a very much a group effort of our of our office um, of collaborating offices and organizations across the country. Um, however, that being said, 
All of the resources that we are producing are available in Spanish. These can be found at CaminaConMadres.com. Okay, somebody else is asking, um, how does this relate to the Respect Life Plan for 2020-2021? Is this part of it or does it play, take the place of it? Um, the short answer is neither. A lot of the um, resources are going to pair very well. For example, we're um, going to be producing the um, sort of a Cliff Notes version of Evangelium Vitae and an accompanying study guide. Um, that uh, would be perfect for kind of the educational side of walking with moms in need. Um, so they're, they're designed to be separate, but very complementary. Um, okay, next question. Um, people were asking, where do we get the action guide and how much does it cost and how can we get a hard copy of the parish action guide? Um, Chelsea, do you wanna cover that one? I guess the good news is it's absolutely free. You just go to walkingwithmoms.com. Uh, you'll navigate over. It's Get Started and Parish Resources. We are not printing this. Um, unfortunately, just it's cost prohibitive, but um, you can download it for free and, you know, print it at any local print shop on your home computer, um, Kinko's or, you know, whatever is, is convenient for you. And that goes for all our resources. Everything we're doing for this is 100% is free. There's no charge for absolutely any of it. And it's all available on our website to download, print, it's yours. And I, I'm sorry if you already mentioned this during your presentation, but um, that is actually a great selling point for pastors who maybe are hesitant to take on something new right now. Um, just that it's, it's absolutely either no cost or very low cost. Um, and so that might be helpful. Um, to right. highlight. Right, especially that all the materials too are from the USCCB, which hopefully is a trusted source and coming from the, you know, the Bishop's Conference and it being 100% free, you know, it's really, it should be hopefully seen as maybe more legitimate to pastors. Right. So when we say gaps, what would be some examples of gaps? What a great question. That's kind of, again, we keep saying it's a process, don't mean to belabor it, but what, what you'll notice when you begin doing the inventory of what's available in your community for a woman in need, you might notice that there are things that aren't there. Like maybe they're the only clinic is locally isn't Catholic and might promote things that you are a little worrisome. And it might be maybe in your community, your parish, there are a lot of doctors there who might be able to be available to help women with certain prenatal consultations or something like that. That's an example of a gap. Maybe there already is a great pregnancy care center but it's, it's far away. It, are there people in the parish who could drive women to the pregnancy care center? Or maybe if one's really far away, could that be something that the parish looks at, at getting started? You know, some kind of local Catholic pregnancy care center. So there, the, the options are endless. What we know is that women are looking for resources. They're also looking for friends. They're looking for people to talk to. They're looking for people to take them to a doctor's appointment, you know. Um, interesting fact is that three quarters of women who are seeking an abortion are below the poverty line. 89% are unmarried. So there's a tremendous amount of deprivation that a lot of these women are enduring. And I think you're going to notice that when you're looking at who's really vulnerable in your community, who's low income and, 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 and in other ways, you know, in need, you're going to see that there are things that maybe aren't there, or if they are there, the addition of a helping hand of someone to really walk with them, another a friend, a, a person to give them that relational support is crucial. So that, those are some examples of potential gaps. And I just want to add uh, to what Kat said that um, this has gone through very detailed in the action guide. So we're giving you a 50,000 foot view of just the overview, the basics, all the, I know, and just, and the questions we're not going to get to, a lot of these things are answered when you actually go through and read the 78 pages. So we've tried to like hit everything, um, but there will be, you know, there's, there's steps on how to identify those gaps, um, how the inventory process is going to reveal those, then how to, how to address them and um, ideas of how to fill them. So it is all in that action guide. Um, so what would you say to people who are wondering whether they can team up with other local parishes near them? I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea and it's a, it's a great way to uh, link resources. As someone mentioned, like for instance, if you find that there's no pregnancy center within a hundred miles, that might be something that a group of parishes might do. Or if you find that there's a tremendous need for housing you know, in your area that maybe a group of parishes can get together 
and look at starting a small, you know, residential maternity home. So there's many things that, that you can do as a group. So yes, that's greatly to be encouraged um, at the at the local level, regional level. And I'll just add to what Tom said. I mean, um, I think we do really encourage that, especially when it comes to responses, especially for some larger projects that are going to take more, you know, than one parish. Um, we do really encourage every parish to have their specific core team and to complete the inventory for themselves, just because that's the best way that your parish is going to get to know the landscape and understand the community. And we realize some of you are very close and have similarities. And so definitely team up and help each other. Um, but we do just really encourage you to really dive in as a parish as well and to, to form that, um, that, that parish, um, that parish committee to really um, take on some of those things. Right, and again, it's what, as Chelsea said too, we, we want everyone at the parish, everyone in the pews, to know where to refer a pregnant or parenting mom in need. So the more we can also do, the more we can, yes, do something locally as a parish, but then also maybe for the responses, work together, that's fantastic. But we also do need that individual parish involvement to, to build that community locally, to get everyone in the pews knowing where to refer a woman in need and how to walk with her. And some parishes have great relationships already. So if that's a natural outflow, like definitely like help each other out, like team up, that's great. The more, but just make sure you're still getting um, your parish involved too. And we have about 20 seconds left. Um, I just want to get one last question in, which is um, if parishes are not able to meet right now, parish groups are not able to meet, um, you know, only meetings are by Zoom, et cetera, or, um, or that kind of thing, how can they move forward with this? Especially if they're not um, someone who's uh, well-versed in that type of technology. So this is a great question. One of the things we love about walking with moms in need is because we're trying to build new partnerships. And that even happens with who is taking the, taking the reins on aspects of walking with moms itself. Admittedly, Walking with Moms in Need has a lot of digital resources, right? We have websites and webinars and downloads. And, and the reality is, is that a lot of the moms in need who you're serving are use tech for everything in their everyday life. I mean, the fact is, is that most moms out there who are pregnant or parenting or, you know, who are vulnerable are probably in their 20s and more comfortable with texting than they are even with a traditional phone call. So what Walking with Mom in Need invites is the participation of more people of different generations. So we absolutely welcome you, even if you're not super comfortable with tech, to participate with Walking with Moms, talk to your pastor about it, serve on that core team, but then talk with your pastor and see how you can get people involved too are younger, different generations, are comfortable with technology, and can help flesh out different aspects of this program too, because we cannot replace the experience and commitment of our veteran, you know, committed volunteers who, who might not be as comfortable with technology, but bring a wealth of experience to this type of ministry. That said, there are needs today that involve working with technology. So we hope that a project like Walking with Moms in Need can bring different generations together, including the younger parishioners at a church, yet youth group and, and the rest, um, because that's, that's a really important aspect of it. And I think there was something in that question I didn't address. I don't know. Well, if, how can they move forward if they can't meet together in person? Oh, that's huge. Yeah, Chelsea, I think I'm gonna pump this to you because you've talked extensively about the steps that can be done. Sure. Um, so, I mean, and, and this is going to require a little bit of technology. And so who can you reach out to? Is it someone else at your parish that you can team up with? Is it, you know, a friend, a colleague that you can say, hey, I want to do this. I need some help with the computer. That's, that's, you know, but a lot of the beginning steps is really honestly getting your pastor on board and getting him to appoint a parish leader, which could be you. It could be someone else. And, you know, encourage him to choose, you know, to really discern that. And we have steps for that in the guide. But once they have that, then, you know, you can start building that core team. You can start emailing or, you, you know, use the phone. People are, you know, dying for some communication these days. So um, reach out to people that you think would be great on the core team, invite them. You can even meet um, as the core team. You can do it via a video chat if you have that capability. If you're in an area that would maybe allow for, you know, you to get together outside socially distance appropriately start meeting planning you can also um, 
beginning steps of the inventory. It's a lot of phone calls to organizations, online research. That's all stuff that you can do right from home today, starting now. All right, I think that wraps us up. Um, if anybody else has other questions, feel free to send them to us. We will be looking at um, the most frequently asked and hopefully developing kind of an FAQ. Um, so your questions, if you're thinking of somebody else probably is also. Um, so your questions will help us do our best to continue answering those uh, into the future. Um, with that, I'll pass it back to Kat. All right, thank you again. And just to sum up what we've, what we've talked about, first step, you know, look at, look at the action guide and connect with your pastor and diocesan respect life coordinator if you're interested in getting walking with moms and needs started. For those of you who are already been appointed as a parish leader, dive a little deeper into phase one and see what you can start doing from home. Most importantly, continue to pray for mothers in need and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to continue to lead this initiative because that's the most important thing, right? We want to do the will of God and to be the face of Christ to others. I'm so grateful for all of you, for your interest in being Christ's hands and feet. And I, I pray for you and for all of your efforts, and we will continue to be here to serve you and help you as you try to get this all started. God bless all of you.